Hey guys, I had this company Lumentech reach out to me and say that they recently came out with a pistol light and asked if I would be willing to take a look at it and provide some feedback. Um, the model that they have is the S800 and this is S800L, which I assume that's going to be a laser mount and it might already be available. I'm not sure, but they sent me the S800 and we can see it's 800 lumens. It's got 90 meters of throw and it has an internal battery uh, that has 65 minutes, I assume on the highest setting. So I figured we do a quick unboxing, go over all of its features and specifications, get it mounted to something. We'll get up to the range and see if it actually works as advertised. Uh, a little bit of stuff on the manual here. I'm not sure if that was from the like grease or whatever from the light right there so we'll look quickly at the manual so it does have a quick release mount which we'll go over that and it looks like it's drop rated at just one meter there's our dimensions so it's just over two inches by an inch by an inch basically it is waterproof rated IP65. That right there is a little bit low. So I'll have to see what that looks like. That's the Candela. It's only 2,025 Candela. Um, and that is super important on a weapon light. So what we'll to see what the beam actually looks like. And also in the case is a charging cable. It's a USB-C. So it's type A to USB-C. So no magnetic charging or anything like that. Uh, looks like we have some Allen keys or no, those are actually star shaped. And then what's the second one in here? Oh, that is an Allen key. So two different, two different types of wrenches there. And then a bunch of different uh, rail adapters in case you have a Glock or Smith and Wesson. And I'll go over all those whenever we pull it out here in a minute. So here's what was in that little package. There's four extra screws and then there's five plates. And I assume that there's already one mounted onto the light itself. I will say that these are all like labeled somewhat weird. Um, so this says, it's hard to see it through. It looks like it says GF and then we have a GA, a GH, GC, GL. Um, and I think it's a GB that's on the light itself already. And when you look through the manual, it honestly doesn't tell you what all these other ones go to. It just says that the GB, uh, goes with most Glock handguns, but then it talks about like your mill standard, you're like your 1913. Um, but none of these say 1913, none of them say Beretta, none of them say like Smith and Wesson or any of that. So it's somewhat odd how that is. So I went to Lumentax website and it really doesn't say on here either what it really is compatible with. It just says that it comes with both GB and Picatinny rail inserts. All right, let's get the light out. I didn't mention it, but it did come in this nice little case here. It is like a hard plastic, a pretty thick, durable little case. So and nicely padded in here. So at least they do take some pride in what they're doing. All right, so this is the little light itself. So there is that quick release lever that I was talking about. So that's just basically how you're gonna mount it. You just open that and then put it over your rail and close that. Uh, it's similar to like Olight and I think Claris makes one like that as well. But we'll get a kind of up close here on it. So it almost looks like a TIR lens there um, in my experience that's usually a almost like a combination beam again we'll, we'll get outside in a bit and kind of check it out but it's not you usually don't have a really 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 defined hot spot when you have a tir but again we'll look at it so lumentax so the nice branding there uh, that might be like a little charge indicator uh, right there, I see like a little spot for like an LED light. Um, nothing really on the bottom. That looks like that's our charging port right there. So 
So there's your USB-C port. And on this side, we have the name of the light itself, the Sightword S800. Um, my opinion, I don't care for that font. Um, I kind of almost wish that they stuck with that because like, if you look here on the box, it doesn't have that, that font at all. I don't know. It just kind of looks out of place in my opinion. And then we have the controls or the switches back here. Uh, they are textured almost like a diamond pattern on it. Uh, but they do feel plastic. It would be nice if that was like a soft rubber. Yeah, it's definitely a plastic. And so these, um, I'm assuming that they will squeeze in. Uh, we'll go over all the controls here in a bit, but yeah, they definitely don't go up and down. So they, they squeeze in to turn it on and off. I know I said it earlier, but it is close to two inches. Uh, let me get that right there. Close to two inches in length. Just about an inch in height. And just about an inch in width and a weight on it let's see in ounces right at exactly two ounces and that's 56 grams and up on top is where those little rail key adapters go and again that one right there is supposed to be the one that fits most glocks already so I am definitely used to the rail keys going all the way across the light so that you know that it's basically seated properly all the way across your rail section. Whereas if you look at these, that right there is going to be the only thing now. Granted, it will be like clamped on from the side as well. Uh, but so are all these, but, but we'll mount it and see how secure it is. And I'll try to like move it around and, and uh, we'll check things out. But, I would definitely like to see that go all the way across. It's just kind of what, I guess, how everybody else does it. So my very first thoughts on it is that the anodization seems really good all the way around it. Um, I will say that the little like latch lever here um, is a little bit loose, not, not crazy. And I know you can tighten it from here as well. Um, but it does appear to be a slightly different color and maybe a different material than what the rest of the light is made out of. Um, it does seem like it's constructed really well though. All right, before we mount it to something, let's go over the use. It looks like there's three different settings. You basically can have high, strobe, or low. Um, so for the high, it basically says just click either button on the side. Strobe, uh, looks like you click it twice. And then low three times. So let's start off here in that high. So just one click. And that is our highest setting. All right, next up, we'll do the strobe. Um, again, they said two clicks. So uh, let's try this side this time. Uh, that was two clicks and it didn't do anything. Let's try this side. So let me try three clicks. All right, so it took it took more than two, but now let's see if it'll do it on two. That way, maybe we had to activate it or something. Nope. So let's do it a little bit slower. So there we go. So I was possibly pressing a little bit too fast for it. So one. And then, so you're almost turning it on and then within a half second or so, uh, pushing it again. So see, I'm on, then I push it and the other setting is a low white and it says to quickly triple click it. And if you do that, all I keep getting is the strobe. But what I found is if I just push it like four or five or six times, It'll get to the low setting and then stay there. So let me do this a bunch of times here. See, now we're on the, the lower setting, but that was way more than three presses. Um, I think for most people, they're just going to use the high setting on a, on a weapons light, but 
I would probably eliminate that low if it were me designing this. Just do high and do the strobe. All right, so I brought a few different pistols out here to see if this little rail adapter fits in there right and how secure it is. And if I need to put any of those different rail adapters on, we'll just take those couple screws out and then try a different one. And just so YouTube knows, every firearm on here is unloaded. Uh, it actually went on there super easy, like one second, and it's actually super, super strong and solid. I'm actually surprised by that. I didn't think that little section would hold on there very well. There's zero side to side tilt, uh, no forward backwards movement, nothing. That is rock solid on there. Uh, that first gun I just had it on was a Taurus TX-22, which is Glock 19 size. Um, now it's on a G3C. Uh, again, mounted up no problems at all. Can reach the switches easily. Again, either side turns it on and off. Strobe low. Very solid. And this is on a Ruger SR-22. Again, everything is unloaded um i have a hard time finding lights that fit on this little pistol and that fit on there just fine i still haven't changed any of those plates this is still the original glock plate thing is super solid i i, I really am shocked by how well that little piece holds on there but again on and off no problem at all youtube policies don't really allow for the mounting of flashlights and scopes and stuff anymore but basically that little piece right there, I am lining up with that rail section. And then once it's on there, I'm basically just closing that latch to lock it in place. Uh, this is the TX-22 Compact, so we'll try it on here next. Yeah, again, it fits on there great. I mean, like I am really pulling on this thing and there is just no movement. I just turned the light on there, but no movement whatsoever in that. And here's a Beretta PX4 Storm. The rail section on this is probably going to be a little bit long. Um, it's probably going to be out kind of far away from the trigger guard, but we'll still try it and show what it looks like. Yeah, again, mounted up, no problems at all. And no side to side, no front to back. I really am shocked with how, how solid that thing mounts up there. So kudos to them. They did a good job of designing that. But yeah, I, I wouldn't run it like this. This is a little bit uh, too small of a light for this for this rail on this gun. It's better to have this back a little bit further. I can still reach the controls, um, but I'm really reaching out there. Versus like this, where you can see how the uh, controls are much easier to get to. So before we do the nighttime shots and the range stuff, um, I will get this thing fully charged up. Um, you do have to remove it in order to charge it though. Cause again, that charging port was basically up in there. So we want to take it off. All right, we'll check out the Lumen Tech inside the house. This room is about 12 by 20. Let's see what it looks like here. Actually does have a pretty decent hot spot over there. It's on that sign on the couch, but as you can see, it does kind of have a lot of spill to it as well. Uh, that's more than both of the walls are kind of lit up there, but it does light up the room pretty well. And now we'll try the strobe inside. And if I can get to it, we'll use the low. And even that does a pretty decent job inside. And now we'll compare the LumenTac to a Phoenix, which is a real similar output. It is a different color of light, but I just kind of want to get a, this is the Phoenix right now. And that's the LumenTac. The Phoenix hotspot seems to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, 
Yeah, and the Lumintech does definitely have a little more spill to it. All right, outside with the Lumintac, uh, the same area that I always test at. I'm about 30 feet away from this wall. There is a light on right there, light on there, but we'll still see what this looks like. Yeah, that actually lights it up pretty well. The camera kind of adjusts. Um, again, not the most defined hot spot, but it does light up the area really well. And again, I'll compare it with the 750 lumen uh, Phoenix light. So that's the Phoenix. And then this is the Lumentac again. Phoenix. So the Phoenix is a little bit less lumens, but it's more candela. So it does look a little bit brighter to me out here. All right, one last area to try out. I'm about 50 feet away from this corner. Uh, we'll do the Lumentac first, see what it looks like. You know, lights that up pretty well. We'll shut it off, try the Phoenix. Let's bring the Lumentac back in. And Phoenix there. And that's the Lumentac. All right, guys, out at the range today with that little Lumentech pistol or weapon light. Um, one complaint before I even start shooting today is to kind of let you guys know, you do got to be careful when you're storing this or transporting it. I put this in my range bag last night, and my bag has a bunch of different others of these types of bags that you stack them all on top of each other. And when I went to zip that up, I noticed that the light was coming out of there. You see how easy that is to activate it? Like just the lightest little touch on it turns that thing on and it does get really hot. And unfortunately, I can't figure out a way to like actually shut it off. Some lights, you know, you can twist the head of it and it deactivates it. But because of this internal battery and stuff like that, there's not a lockout mode or a way to turn it off. So do be careful uh, if you're transporting that. All right, ran a few rounds through it. We'll uh, throw another magazine in and maybe run four or five magazines total. Uh, it'll be close to 50 rounds and see if it gets too hot or if it shuts off or flickers or anything like that. All right, back from the range with this Lumentech, share some thoughts with you guys. Uh, there weren't any issues with the light shutting off um, or flickering, uh, no problems functionally whatsoever. After I did the initial video part, I basically left the light on uh, for the next like probably 20 to 30 minutes out there, um, even between magazine changes and stuff like that. And even though it got warm, it never got too hot to touch. And uh, I never noticed like the light really dimming down from its initial brightness. So some more of my likes and dislikes is I do like that it has the, the quick release lever here, but I will let you know that it causes the light to stick out quite a bit more, which could be an issue for holsters. I do not particularly care for the user interface on how to get to strobe and the low mode. Personally, I would never use them on a weapon light. I almost feel like they should just eliminate them. Um, and I, you know, I would just use that high mode only. 
but it's obviously kind of confusing that, I mean, you have to hit it multiple times to get to the strobe and then multiple more times. And see, I'm not even able to get to it right now. I'm hitting that thing like 10 times and it's still not going to the low there. I'm on low, but that that's just, it, it shouldn't do that. Um, eliminate the low mode for sure. Um, and maybe just do high and then strobe. Again, I didn't get the strobe there. It takes way more than the two presses that it says that it's supposed to. I actually prefer these style of paddle controls where you're pushing inward to activate the light uh, versus up or down. Um, Enforce uses the same style and it, it's what I prefer, but I definitely wish there was a way uh, to turn the thing off uh, by either twisting the head or a switch or something. Because like I said, in my range bag, it literally just took like the tiniest little tap and that thing was on like just the pressure from another bag being on it activated it. Some people are not going to like the fact that the battery is internal. Uh, there's no way to replace it. Um, so if it were to completely die, you basically got to throw the light away. And it looks like the entire light, which would include the battery, has a one year warranty. The brightness of the light, which is obviously the purpose of a weapons mounted light, was, was decent. Um, it's supposed to be 800 lumens. This is the Phoenix that I was doing all the comparison to. Um, this is supposed to be 750 lumens, and Phoenix is a very reputable brand. Um, and I actually think they were pretty similar. Um, the hot spots were a little bit different, uh, but the overall brightness, they were about the same cosmetically or aesthetically just personally i don't i don't care for that right there but that's just me not liking it there's nothing wrong with it so let's talk pricing real quick these are coming in at 69 dollars um, and i could not find them on amazon they may not be available on there uh, so you might have to purchase from their website um, i cannot leave a link in the YouTube description for something like this to this website, but it's lumentech.com. If you're interested in finding out more, um, just go there and you can purchase directly from there if you want to. So at $69, they're not the cheapest. I've, I've had lights that are like $20 and I've also had lights that are like three and $400. Um, some of your surefires and the mod lights and the cloud defensive, some of those lights get really, really expensive. $69 is kind of close to the price on some of the O lights. And I will say that O light has a better warranty. Um, I think theirs is like three years or five years or something like that. You know, at the end of the day, though, I always tell people to basically buy the absolute best light that you can afford to buy um, with the highest lumens and for sure the highest candela that you can afford to buy. And if $70 is all that you can afford, this is probably a pretty decent light. It tested really well. Um, I'm not saying that like the quality of a Surefire or even a Streamlight um, is that much better, but they definitely have higher Candela and that is important on a weapon light. But again, those start off at 130 and go up to three or $400. So this is a pretty good $70 light. So if you guys have any questions or comments for me, please leave them down below. And that's going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.